Socrates is arguably the most unique personality football has ever witnessed. A 6'4 elite athlete who would bully players on the pitch, yet be one of the greatest humanitarians and political influences in Brazil's history. This guy was a qualified doctor, yet he smoked and drank like there was no tomorrow. A true oxymoron of a player who retired as a Brazil legend despite not being in any of their many World Cup wins. In fact, Bro went against the norm so much that he retired at Garforth Town, who played in one of the lowest divisions in England just for the vibes. He was a creative genius at the heart of the midfield and was a leader on and off the pitch. How can a man be so dominant in the air and you have a delicate feather touch? When you picture Socrates, you automatically picture that iconic headband he used to wear with words of support for different countries written on them. Or if you're a bit younger, you picture Socrates scoring those crazy scoop volleys on FIFA 19. We will be pleased to know those were actually realistic. He was crushing volleys like prime Tony Yabo. How is it possible that someone so complete does not have a legacy as a top 10 all-time? Collect your pen and paper. This is the story of how a Brazilian superstar went on a mission to change the world. Socrates Brasileiro Sampaio de Souza Vieira de Oliveira was born in February 1954. While often we hear about players trying to make it out the hood or growing up in the favelas playing barefoot, Socrates had a completely different story. His father was a self-taught local hero, which enabled Socrates to get a place in the best possible school in their region. It wasn't until he reached 20 years old that his professional career began in 1974 with Botafogo. During all the chaos of the coup in Brazil that started a long military dictatorship, his father, an avid reader, had to destroy his entire library of books that Socrates himself loved reading in his spare time. Nevertheless, he had already absorbed all the info required to adopt a completely different perspective on the game. While others viewed football as a confrontation and competition between two polar opposites, he viewed the game as art, and you could see it in the way he played. The fancy back heels were both aesthetically pleasing, but also very effective. He'd go on to play 166 times over the course of the next five years for Botafogo, scoring 67 goals in the process. Despite the crazy amount of goals, it wasn't until his next move that we really saw him become a prominent figure on and off the pitch. Even though Socrates was clearly a gifted footballer, his dream was still to become a doctor who would help combat poverty and inequality in Brazil. You wouldn't think it by the way he was dunking on guys' heads when he joined Corinthians in 1978. As he continued to mercilessly crush it on his opponents, he'd spend the other half of his day back at home reading books and forming his own ideology. On the field, the goals are flying left, right, centre. And off it, he'd start to make friends with sports journalists and other people who would shape his opinions further. In 1981, his team director of football and even his own Afro-Brazilian teammate inspired him to fight for democracy and player power in an era where they were still treated as unskilled labor. Look at what this brother is doing on the pitch and ask if some random president looking at the fat controller from Thomas the Tank Engine could do any of this unskilled work. Yet he himself maintained that he was no more important than the kit man or the physio. Nowadays, people talk about focusing on football rather than getting involved in political convos. But he was comfortably balancing both. If anything, determination to be an even greater voice is what gave him the motivation to get better and better until he made his way into Brazil's World Cup squad for 1982. Socrates commanded so much respect by now that he led the famous Brazil out onto the pitch as captain. He'd score in the opening group game as they beat the Soviet Union 2-1 and eventually win all three group games. Whenever reporters would ask him questions about upcoming games or previous performances, he'd find a way to spin it into a discussion about social issues in Brazil. He wasn't waffling with complex language, he spoke in a way that the streets could understand, in a way that people would happily get behind him, especially when they see him dominating for Corinthians, the team of the people. He said, if people don't have the power to say things, I'll say it for them. Unfortunately, despite him bagging against Italy, they'd be eliminated from the competition by a Paolo Rossi hat-trick. Back at club level, after scoring 150 goals in 269 games and three Campeonato Paulista trophies, he made the very tough decision to move abroad and go to Fiorentina after the Brazilian government refused his request for direct presidential elections. In true Socrates fashion, he'd score his first goal with a delightful chip in a 5-0 win over Atalanta. While his talent was undeniable, his languid playstyle became cause for criticism in the newspapers. Not that he cared though. When guys would ask him what his sports on all the slander he was receiving. He flat out said, nah, I don't read the sports articles. I just turn to the page that has the politics. His form continued to fluctuate and after failing to convince his teammates to join him on the political side of things, he went back to Brazil after firing shots at the Italian players, calling them nothing but employees of the pitch. The 1986 World Cup was seeming like deja vu as he scored an opening goal yet again versus Spain to help Brazil on their way to three straight wins in the groups. Socrates was still determined to have an influence and educate the people, so much so that he'd now start writing messages on his iconic headband. Even something as simple as Mexico stand tall after the host nation had been hit by an earthquake nine months before the tournament. Some were simple messages like justice or no violence, but other times he'd go all out, like when he denounced the US's bombing of Libya. He'd score his trademark casual no-runner penalty in a 4-0 romp against Poland. 
but couldn't get past the quarterfinals as they met a formidable French team. Again, when asked about it, he simply said that a match finishes after 90 minutes, but life goes on. He'd spend a year at Flamengo in 1986, picking up the Campeonato Carioca and the Tacarillo, thanks to his elegance gliding through the pitch and the ability to just spray past his left, right and centre with minimal effort. Naturally, the goals would not flow as regularly as they were once he'd reached his 30s, only scoring three in the Brazilian Serie A before moving on to his next team. In 1988, he'd go on to join Santos, now at the age of 34. Any burst of pace he may have had in the past was now no longer on display. It didn't come as much of a surprise to anyone though, considering the fact that he'd spend any free time in between training or whilst they were on the coach, either lying down for a nap or going through cigarettes like their water. He still maintained that natural ability to score thunderous goals and continued making them no-look passes to split defences apart like the Red Sea. But this time, there was to be no trophy accompanying it. He said himself that his political victories are more important than his victories as a professional player. Again, if guys said that in today's day and age, you're going to get guys like Roy Keane and Graham Sooner sparking at them to be dropped from the team for lack of commitment. But when you play as good as this, it's impossible to say that he didn't give his best to the team to try and elevate his teammates as much as physically possible. A year later, he dropped down a division to the Brazilian Serie B, where he'd rejoin his beloved Botafogo, the team that first gave him the opportunity to express himself on and off the pitch and learn more about himself as a person. His body couldn't keep up with his desire to dominate the field, and his once physically imposing, towering frame was becoming more of a hindrance than a benefit. That being said, form is temporary and class is permanent. His passing was still immaculate, pinpoint from any angle of the pitch, and as he reiterated many, many times, he was simply here just playing for the vibes. After all, if you remember, he wasn't even trying to become a footballer at he was just chilling, studying, he pulled up to trials and accidentally ended up being the best one there. Normally you'd expect that ending your career where it first started is the perfect way to close out a wonderful story. But Socrates being the guy he is got bored of chilling at home for 15 years during his retirement and bro decided he still had time for one last adventure. After Pelé named Socrates in the FIFA 100 list of the world's best living footballers in 2004, he said yeah, fair, it's cool, and headed down to England to join Garforth Town in West Yorkshire as a player slash coach. This is the epitome of what is a polar bear doing in Texas. Bear in mind he was 50 years of age. It won't shock you to learn that he only made one appearance in a Garforth shirt, a 12 minute cameo against Tad Caster Albion. Looking at it now, it looks like one of those random R9 Sunday League Paddy Power adverts. But he said himself he had tremendous fun despite the shocking weather. If he hadn't been regarded as one of the most on all four those footballers in history by now, this random move definitely cemented it. He was now happy to return back to Brazil and continue practicing medicine in Ribeiro Preto. It's mad to watch his clips when you realize this brother went on to become both a philosopher and a television football pundit. Socrates was a man who refused to let fame and success compromise his values and willingness to help out those less fortunate. Unfortunately, he was to pass away in 2011 after complications with his health, on the same day that his much cherished Corinthians won their first league title for six years. The fans held up banners in honour of their legend, but it wasn't just Brazil who was in mourning. The entire footballing world would go on to pay tribute to an inspirational footballer the likes of which we've not seen again in the 20 years since his official retirement from Garforth Town. Socrates will remain a Hall of Famer and be spoken about for the rest of time. So if this is your first time ever watching clips of him, hopefully you learned something new. If you did, leave a like on the video, let me know what footballer you think could come even close to having this level of political influence nowadays, and subscribe for a new lesson every Monday. Class dismissed. Bosh.